So do you like cake? What? They make really good cakes here. They're very round. <laughs> what? Nothing. I just didn't know the rodeo was in town. All right, that's it. I'm bringing the baby pictures. No! I'm sorry! I love the rodeo. The rodeo rules. Your boobs are way bigger than mine. <sighs> that is not true. Yes, it is. Your boobs are totally bigger than mine. You're crazy. That, do you want to measure? What? I'm serious. Why don't you go get the measuring tape right now? I am not going to measure my boobs. Because you know that you are totally bigger. I'm going inside. Fine, don't measure. We'll just compare bras. Stop it. I'll stop it when you quit stealing my stuff. You're cracked. You're bigger. <laughs> oh, you imbecile. Back off, Chevalier. Mm, you stupid, blind, and clumsy. Well, at least I'm not friends. Hey, what's going on? She ran over my shoe. He got in the way. You aimed for me. Fine, then I will curse you. Constantly, and in several languages. Go on for the other foot. Oh, no! Drella, to your corner now. I win. Michelle, you're a grown man. Now go to your desk and act like one. So where'd you say Dad was? Away on business. Location staff secret? Oh, Germany. Germany. Is Dad's firm insuring Nazis now? Your father doesn't know any Nazis. I know, Mom. I was just... What? Joking. She was joking. Oh. Hard to tell. Yeah. Well. Oh, wait. Rudolf Gottfried. Another cousin. No, a Nazi that we knew. I'd forgotten. We stayed with him once in Munich. Nice old man. Interesting stories. Mom, you, you socialized with a known Nazi? That's despicable. That's heinous. No, dear. That was a joke. <laughs> so, for the fight? Absolutely. I'm going to be so cool in there. You will mistake me for Shaft. There will be no interrogation. I swear, no kissing noises, no stories from my childhood, no referring to Chicago as Shy Town, no James Dean jokes, no father with a shotgun stares, no Nancy Walker impressions. Oh, come on. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Well, what's the problem, Emily? The problem is that apparently Florence cannot get here because of the storm. Florence? Our cook. Oh. Well, we'll just have to go out then. Oh, please, Richard, pay attention. We can't go out. It's miserable out there. Well, we'll figure something out then. What? What will we figure out? Well, I don't know, but... I hate the damn snow. Emily, calm down. This is a serious problem. These Friday dinners are the only proper food that child eats all week. Rory, are you in any way malnourished or in need of some international relief organization to recruit a celebrity to raise money on your account? I'm good. She's good, Emily. Your sense of humor rears its ugly head at the oddest of times, Richard. You know what? Let me give it a try. All right. <clears throat> Hmm. Yes? It's even more disgusting than I thought it was going to be. Oh, it is not. Oh, my God! It's horrible! Why on earth do I fit him? Why don't you go home? You want me to go? You don't look so good. Thanks. That's not what I meant. You know you always look good. Yeah? I meant you always look healthy. Okay. But you don't look so healthy now. Now you look... Unhealthy. Yes. Oh, what? So I said you look good. We're not in fifth grade. You look good. Big deal. Stop staring at me. Ah, oh, jeez. <sighs> See? That's what you get for being cocky. <gasps> Laurel, I come here. Gee, Mom, did I do something wrong? I try to understand you. I truly do. But sometimes your behavior baffles me beyond belief. And which behavior is this, Mom? Do you have no shame? Is that intended as a rhetorical question, or...? Rory goes to school in that place. She has a reputation to protect. You're her mother. How did you...? You're supposed to shield her from shame, not cause it. Oh, Mom. Kissing a teacher? In a classroom? On Parents' Day? Well, they wanted us to get more involved with the school. Are you insane? No, but you are if you think I am discussing this with you. When I heard, I almost fainted. How, how did you hear, Mom? I have friends, Lorelei. Headmaster Charleston's wife, for one. Oh, that's great. The entire school is talking about it. And what do I say? How do I defend this? Uh, it was a mistake. A mistake? A mistake? Is that what you call it? A mistake? Well, I tried to call it Al, but it would only answer to mistake. But let's be honest. I certainly don't want Rory to turn out like me. I don't want Lane to turn out like you either. Now, I believe that's the first thing you and I have ever agreed on. Hey. 
Was Rachel pretty? What? I'm just curious. Was she pretty? She was pretty. Like, like what kind of pretty? What do you mean, what kind of pretty? I mean, like, was she a Catherine Zeta-Jones kind of pretty or a Michelle Pfeiffer pretty or? She was an Elle McPherson kind of pretty. Really? Yep. <laughs> it's an intense kind of pretty. You're not kidding. I never pictured Luke with an Elle McPherson kind of pretty. No? Pictured him more with the Lorelai Gilmore kind of pretty? Ah, oh, the air up here must be very thin because you're delirious. And you're jealous. What? You're jealous of Rachel. You're accusing me of being jealous of a woman who dumped a man I'm not even interested in five years ago? Yes. And you don't think that's crazy? Oh, I do think that's crazy. Right, I'm not jealous. Yeah, you are. <laughs> grab your brush and grab your rollers, all you kids and all you bowlers. We're going painting today. I hate President Bush. What? Lorelai. Oh, boy. He's stupid, and his face is too tiny for his head, and I just want to toss him out. That is the leader of our country, young lady. Ignore her. His face is too tiny for his head? What kind of a thing is that to say? I see your daughter's just as out of control as ever, Richard. Pop, please, let's try to keep it civil. How dare you? Richard, How you dare doing? you come into my house and insult Richard, my daughter? Sir, let go of me. Whoa, whoa, what is going on here? Shame on you, Strobe. Shame on you for opening all of this up again. Get your purse, Francine. My daughter is very successful at what she does. We're leaving. You're not leaving. I'm kicking you out. And you brought up Bush because... It seemed like a good idea at the time. Oh, hey, Mom, uh, Rory and Dean are having their three-month anniversary on Friday. Really, Lorelai? Well, that's wonderful. I'm thrilled. Stop. Three months. Well, woo-hoo. Hold on, I'm going to cartwheel. Forget it. Oh, no, wait. She's telling my dad now. Why, I think they're cabbage patching. That's it. Find your own pants. It's 6 o'clock. I know. On Saturday morning. That's right. It's 6 o'clock on Saturday morning. Do you want to wear docks or sneakers? I want to wear slippers. Up, please. Rory, my heart, it is Saturday, the day of rest. Sunday's the day of rest. No, Saturday's the day of pre-rest. Pre-rest? Yeah, so that way when you actually get to Sunday, you're rested enough to enjoy your rest. Excuse me, boys. I have to get out everything she has ever given us. 35 years worth of fish lamps and dog statues, lion tables and... Stupid naked angels with their butts and... Whoa, <laughs> stupid naked angel butts? What, did David Mamet just stop by? Leave, please. Mom, calm down. I can't calm down. That lampshade is missing and the china is cracked and I can't remember which table it is that she gave us for our 10-year anniversary. Mother, Grandma is a very old woman. I highly doubt that she's going to remember everything she ever bought you. She will remember down to the last shrimp fork. And do you know why? No. Do you guys know why? Because she doesn't just give you a present, she gives you a present. Then she tells you where to put it, how to use it, what it costs for insurance purposes, of course. And God forbid you should have a different opinion or you don't think it works in the space or you just get tired of waking up every morning with those horrifying animals staring at you. She's just upset. Stop talking to the dogs! Mom! You're freaking out. <clears throat> oh, hey, Kirk. You getting a cold? You know, you should try that Dynamatic Emifemital. Knocks it right out. Don't drive your forklift, though, because it'll make you drowsy. Do you mind? Kirk, the movie hasn't even started yet. I like to have silence in order to cleanse my mental palate and achieve calm before enjoying a motion picture. Oh, you got that out of a book. You are now officially disturbing not just me, but every person in this theater. Kirk, you're the only one who's disturbed. than I was yesterday. Oh, boy. I'm just not sure. I mean, at first I looked in the mirror and I thought, well, yes, definitely huge improvement. Can I have my pillow back? But then I thought maybe it's not that I'm more beautiful today. Maybe I was just as beautiful yesterday, only I lack the self-esteem to recognize it. Oh, <laughs> 